Good evening, everyone, and welcome to First Energy Stadium, the Baseball Town High School Baseball Championship game about to get underway. We are a couple minutes away from first pitch of tonight's matchup, and tonight's matchup for the 2023 Birch County Championship game features two very, very familiar rivals, the Wilson Bulldogs, the Governor Mifflin Mustangs. Wilson's at 15 and six overall in the season. Governor Mifflin is at 17 and four. Mustangs won division one of the Burks Conference at 10 and two. Wilson ended up in third place in division one at eight and four, but they were the top two seeds going into the BCIAA baseball playoffs and they took care of business. Wilson with a win in the quarterfinals over Ole by a score of six to nothing. Muhlenberg in the semifinals by a score of six to five. For Governor Mifflin, they mercy ruled at Brandywine Heights in the first run, round at 12 to nothing. And in the semifinals, they beat Fleetwood nine to seven. The meet and match it make for a third date between these two. The first two went to Wilson. Again, the two losses for Governor Mifflin in divisional play in the Burks Conference were both to the Bulldogs. April 17th in Shillington, Wilson won that one by a score of six to three. And then in the rematch on May, May 5th at Wilson, the Bulldogs won that one as well by a score of one to nothing. My name is Bob McCool. Beautiful night for baseball. The Reading Fighting Phils are on the road. They'll begin a six game homestand at Somerset tomorrow. And so with the big Phils away, the big boys away, it's a chance for the high school kids to get a chance to play here at America's Classic Ballpark. So it'll be the Governor Mifflin Mustangs and the Wilson Bulldogs. For Wilson, this is their 18th appearance in the Burks Baseball Championship. They have won 12 titles, their last coming in 2019. They beat Hamburg by a score of four to three. For Governor Mifflin, this is their 25th appearance in a county championship game in baseball. They have won 14 titles. The last time they won a title, 2021, and they beat Wilson by a score of five to four. Head coach for the Governor Mifflin Mustangs is Chris Hole. He is in his 11th season in Shillington and a record of 172 and 99. Bill Underwood, who has been with the Wilson program for 19 seasons, takes over this season as the interim head coach. He has been with the Bulldogs program for a long, long time. He's been their pitching coach for a number of years, and he is running the show in 2023. Both these two teams have qualified for the District 3 playoffs. Wilson in the 6A bracket. Right now, they occupy the number seven seed in the 6A bracket. Governor Mifflin is in the 5A classification this year. That is a change. They had been in the 6A classification. They are 5A in this season. And right now they are the number two seeds. The final bids will be established as of tomorrow. Tomorrow is the cutoff date for competition for the District 3 playoffs. So the power rankings that I'm referencing right now are as of this minute. The asterisk in all of this is that the games in the playoffs, league playoffs, do not qualify or, or in terms of district playoff PowerPoint. So the winner of this game and the loser of this game, it is, does not affect their power ranking in terms of the District 3 playoffs, nor did either of the games in the semifinals or the quarterfinals. So Governor Mifflin is the two seed in the 5A bracket. They are one of five teams in Berks County who are in the 5A bracket, Muhlenberg, Daniel Boone, Exeter, and Twin Valley also are as well. Fleetwood and Burks Catholic will be in the 4A bracket. Ole and Brandon Heights in the 3A, and Kutztown has qualified in the 2A bracket. We'll talk about that more as tonight unfolds. It is the Baseball Town High School Baseball Championship game, and we will stand and rise for our national anthem here at First Energy Stadium.
That's got to be a pretty cool moment for the baseball coach at Wilson. Bill Underwood, his daughter Bryn, one of his twin daughters, Bryn and Reagan, twin daughters. The Underwood's a big part of the Wilson School District and athletic community. Bill's wife, Kim, an outstanding field hockey player in her own right. She is also the field hockey coach, a Berks County Hall of Famer for her outstanding field hockey career as a player and a coach. And she, in fact, won a state championship a couple seasons ago for Wilson in field hockey. And two of the best players on that team were Bryn and Reagan Underwood. And now both of those two are playing field hockey in college. Bryn, a intern here with the Reading Fighting Phils for the season of 2023 and singing the national anthem. Got a chance to see both of those young ladies sing over the course of time of doing football and basketball games at Wilson. And they are great young ladies and they both have great voices as well. The Reading Fighting Phils, the AA affiliate of the Philadelphia Phillies since 1967. They of course play their games here at America's Classic Ballpark here in Baseball Town. This is the Baseball Town High School Baseball Championship game. And as I said, Wilson and Governor Mifflin scoring off against one another for the third time. And the winner of this one claims the county title. My name is Bob McCool. As the Governor Mifflin Mustangs, the number one seed, take on the Wilson Bulldogs as the two seed, which means the Bulldogs will be the visitors on the scoreboard. And this is the way the 15 and six Bulldogs will go tonight. Tommy Hunsinger leads off and Junior is at third base. Batting in the two hole is senior second baseman Evan Gabaldon. Batting third is the sophomore first baseman, Christo Hunsinger. Batting cleanup is senior right fielder, Ryan Sikolsky. Batting in the five hole is junior left fielder, Nick Fiorini. Batting sixth is senior center fielder, Rafael Fernandez. Batting seventh is senior catcher, Jordan Shutter. Shutter excuse me. Batting in the eighth spot is the designated hitter, Mason Sensenig. And batting ninth is senior shortstop, Trevor Billadell. Billadu, and they will be facing Ethan Grimm for the Governor Mifflin Mustangs, 10th grader, and he pitched in the quarterfinal game against Brandywine Heights. Again, he is at a fresh amount of pitches with a new week with the high school baseball pitching rules. He only threw 53 pitches as Governor Mifflin mercy ruled Brandywine Heights. Ethan Grimm in the season, five and two overall. He also has a save as well. This is his ninth start. Fifth, the ERA of 2.65. He's pitched 37 innings in total. He struck out 53, and he has walked 28. Throws a fastball that Chris Hole says is in the mid to eight, mid to upper 80s, 86 to 88 on the radar gun. A curve and a changeup. We'll set the defense behind Ethan Grimm as we go through the top half of the first inning. As our Baseball Town High School Baseball Championship game is underway, Tommy Hunsinger bats left-handed, and the junior takes one for a called strike. The defense behind Ethan Grimm. Jonathan Renwanski is in left field. Ryan Lehman is in center. Bryce Wunderlich is in, is in right field. Alex Lez at first. Bryce Detweiler is at second. Shortstop is Tyler Minnick. Third baseman is Matt Kohler, and Travis Jenkins is behind the plate. The second pitch to Tommy Hunsinger is a ball. So one ball and one strike to Hunsinger. And this one is over at the letters for a called strike on the breaking ball. So Ethan Grimm gets himself ahead in the count. Now one ball and two strikes to Hunsinger. Tommy batted 294 on the regular season. He's picked that up in the playoffs. He's five for seven so far in the two playoff games. And this one slapped towards the middle of the diamond. Rice Detweiler up with it at second base and flips it to first in plenty of time for out number one. And we'll bring up Evan Gabaldon. Gabaldon on the season at 3.03. Scuffle a little bit in the playoffs. 0 for 6 in total. Bill Underwood, the coach for the Bulldogs, is actually at first base. And at third base for Wilson is Mike Zentak. Both have been on the Bulldog staff for a number of years as the fastball from Evan Smith at 89 is a bit high on Gabaldon. Talking with Bill Underwood about Evan Gabaldon and just trying to settle him down a little bit. He had some struggles a little bit defensively in Saturday's semifinal game against Fleetwood. Bill Underwood thought he kind of was taking that with him to the bat in his hand and just had a, that moment where he said, look, I need you to do both. I need you to, to have your head on your shoulders with a bat in your hand and not take the glove to the to the plate and not take the bat to the, to the defense. It's a 
thing that all baseball players suffer through at some point in time, and Evan Gabaldon works himself a four-pitch walk. So he's on base here to start things for Wilson in the first. And that'll bring up Christo Hunsinger. Sophomore at 370 on the season. Four doubles, two triples. And he is three for six in the playoffs. As Gabaldon takes his lead off of first. First pitch, just a bit outside. Home plate umpire is Anthony Fegley. First base umpire is Joe Zaorski. Second base is Lee Bice. And at third base is Buddy Zimmerman. Gabaldon takes good size lead off of first. One out, then that makes Grimm a little nervous, so he makes the throw over. Gabaldon has just one stolen base on the season. Takes maybe another half of a step of a lead. Comes with a pitch to the plate, and it goes through the wickets of the catcher, Travis Jenkins. That will allow Gabaldon to move up. Imagine that'll be called a wild pitch. Looked like a curveball that just found the dirt. And Jenkins tried to block it, but it went right through the five hole. And it allows Gabaldon to move up to second base easily. So now Christo Hunsinger in a position to get the Bulldogs on the board quickly. Has eight RBIs on the season. Hit the ball hard in Saturday's semifinals against Fleetwood. And now time called between Jenkins and Grimm. Two will go out and talk with one another. Again, Grimm just a sophomore. Jenkins as well a sophomore. One of four sophomores who see starting time for the Mustangs. Talking with that with Chris Hole about that, and he said, no, we knew that they were going to be a big part of it. But three of them had a lot of time last year as a freshman, so we knew what we were getting. We weren't sure. That we were a little questionable last year when they were freshmen, but we knew going into this season that they were going to, they, they had a chance to be something special. As Grimm misses another now, and it's 3-0 and to another 10th grader in Christo Hunsinger at the plate. So seven straight now out of the zone from Ethan Grimm. And Hunsinger taking all the way, sees the get me over a fastball at 85 miles an hour. Now it's three and one. So Christo will take a look down at Mike Zintek. And he'll no doubt say, go ahead, young man. If it's there, hit it. Three balls and a strike. Up high, ball four. So back to back walks after throwing strikes to the leadoff hitter, Tommy Hunsinger. Now, his younger brother, Christo Hunsinger, is a base runner at first base with two on and one out for the cleanup hitter, Ryan Sikolsky. Ryan looking for his first extra base hit in the playoffs, but he hit 352 during the regular season. Second on the Bulldogs in RBIs on the year with 14. A chance for the Bulldogs to strike first here in the top half of the first inning. Crowd still filing in here at First Energy Stadium. It's a long line at the walk-up. First pitch from Sikolsky, thought about it, decided not to, takes it for a called strike one. Ryan is senior. Again, takes a look down. Two on, one out. Top half of the first. Grimm takes his look back at Gabaldon. Comes with a curveball and a good one on the outside corner, and he's ahead of Sikulski. No balls and two strikes. So after missing on eight of nine pitches to the last two batters. Ethan Grimm responds with a good fastball and an even better curveball. Now he's ahead of Sikulski, no balls and two strikes. Fouled away. Sikulski stays alive. Absolutely gorgeous night for baseball. And two of the best teams in the county going after one another is Sikulski bounds that one foul down the third baseline. 75 degrees, our game time temperature. A little bit of a breeze blowing out to right field. That's not uncharacteristic of this ballpark. Wind at about more of a breeze, shall we say, at about six to eight miles an hour. So now no balls and two strikes to Sikulski. Chases for a steer right three. 
So big strikeout there for Ethan Grimm as he gets Sikulski to go outside the zone and gets the strikeout. That's two down now in the inning, and that'll bring up Nick Fiorini. Well, I mentioned that Ryan Sikulski is second on the team in RBIs. Here comes the leader for the Bulldogs in that category, Fiorini with 17 RBIs, hitting at 333 on the season. And the Bulldogs trying to take advantage of some control issues for Ethan Grimm here in the first. He's walked two, two on now and two out. The left-handed hitting Nick Fiorini. First pitch to him is up high, ball one. Fiorini two for five to this point in time in the playoffs. Good size lead for both base runners. Mustangs don't hold them on. This one lifted into center field. Ryan Lehman has it in his sights. He'll squeeze it for the outs, and that'll do it for the Bulldogs in the first. So Wilson not able to take advantage of the walks, and Ethan Grimm works his way out of any further trouble in the first inning. For the Bulldogs in the first, no runs, no hits, no errors. There were two left at the bottom half of the first inning. Governor Miffa Mustangs will bat for the first time you are watching a Baseball Town High School Baseball Championship game live from America's Classic Ballpark here at First Energy Stadium. Here is the lineup for the Governor Mifflin Mustangs. Again, they're 17 and four on the season. They won Division I of the Berks Conference with a 10 and two record. And they will go with Tyler Minnick as usual as their leadoff hitter, senior shortstop, committed to the University of Connecticut. Couple, he did that before his junior season of baseball. Bryce Detweiler, sophomore second baseman, bats second. Alex Velez, senior first baseman, bats third. The cleanup hitter is sophomore catcher Travis Jenkins. Batting in the five hole is the senior designated hitter, Darian Troche. He will bat for the man who made that last catch at the end of the inning of the freshman center fielder, Ryan Lehman. Matt Kohler bats sixth. He's a sophomore. He's at third base. Jonathan Radwanski, senior left fielder, bats seventh. Ethan Grimm, the pitcher, is batting eighth. And Bryce Wunderlich the junior right fielder bats ninth. In case you're unfamiliar with some of the rules of high school baseball, you can use the designated hitter quite obviously, but it doesn't have to be for the pitcher like it is at other levels of baseball. You can use it for any one of the players in your lineup. And you can also use a courtesy runner for your pitcher if he's hitting and for your catcher at any point in time. So it's kind of a free substitution at that point in time. Some coaches use it. Most coaches use it. Some coaches don't necessarily care for it. I think it's a great rule for the high schools only because it just gets more kids involved rather than having some kids sitting on the bench who might not be all that focused on the game. You've got to stay stay in focus with what's happening in the game. Gets another player or two involved in the game if they know that they've got to come into situations and be a contributor as a runner. So the Muff Governor Muffin Mustangs will get their bottom half of the inning rolling and again the guy who gets it rolling more often than not is Tyler Minnick. 462 batting average on the season. Great power, maybe even better speed. Seven home runs on the year, 11, 17 RBIs. He's got outstanding speed as well. 21 stolen bases. And he'll be facing left-handed pitcher Matt Von Ostenbridge. Von Ostenbridge will be a Division I recruit by the time he is finished. He is just a junior. The Mustangs faced him in both of the two games earlier this season. And he starts Minnick with a curveball and a good one for a strike. Minnick drives this one to center field. Rafael Fernandez will backpedal a couple of steps and make the catch with plenty of distance to go. As Tyler Minnick is a flyout victim, start the first inning. And it'll bring up Bryce Detweiler. Detweiler on the season bats at 446. It's a Mustang team that can score and score a lot of runs. But Van Austin Bridge shut them down in the second meeting in a one to nothing victory. Pitch to that, that water, another curveball and a beauty. And that game at Wilson on May 5th, Van Austin Bridge went the distance, full seven innings, gave up just two hits, no runs, struck out eight, and walked two in a one nothing victory for the Bulldogs. This one tapped towards second. Gabaldon has to take a step back on it and it eats him up. And a good hustle by Detweiler as he rounds first, but will have to go back as the center fielder, Rafael Fernandez, gets it in. 
Just a moment of indecision on the part of Gabaldon, whether he wanted to take the hop or take a step back. And it kind of ate him up a little bit on the hop after he took the step back. And so we'll see how they rule that as to whether it's a hit or an error. But Detweiler is a base runner for the Mustangs. And I'll bring up Alex Velez. Velez at 431 on the season. Big swing by him and comes up empty at the fastball. Ben Austin Ridge, fastball is in that mid 80 range. Has a curve, a slider, and a changeup. A one pitch. They have officially ruled the ball off the bat of Detwire to be an error, which is the right call. And so he is a base runner for the Mustangs with one out. And then quickly, Van Austin Bridge works ahead of Velez. No balls in the strike. Pickoff attempt. No problem for Detwire to get back. Uh, Van Austin Bridge on the season, 3, three and 2, 2.18 earned run average. This is his 14th appearance. He also has a couple of saves. 41 and 2 thirds innings pitched. He struck out 61. He's walked just 11. It's a phenomenal strikeout to walk ratio, especially for a junior in high school. Comes to the pitch, and as I say that, he bounces one up there. Timing is everything in life. As I talk about his control, he bounces one up there to Velez, and now the count is two balls and one strike to Alex Velez. Laz has been playing first base throughout the season for the Mustangs. Chris Holt telling me before the game that they've just gotten clearance for him that he can go back and pitch, which he was a very good pitcher last year as a junior. Runner takes off from first as Velez swings away and fouls it out of play, so Detweiler have to come back to first base. Alex Velez has not pitched in a game since April 3rd in a game against Muhlenberg because of some arm troubles, but the Mustangs coaching staff did get medical clearance so they can use him in relief if they need to today, and it's a good thing to have. They have two sophomore pitchers in Ethan Grimm and Bryce Detweiler. Minnick is the guy they'll bring in to close down again. Now they've got the runner picked off. Christo Hunsinger will throw it to Scabaldon covering, and they say he beat the throw. Ethan Detweiler with credit for a stolen base. I Van Ostenbridge had him picked off. Christo Hunsinger came out to cut down the angle, make the throw. And I believe it was the second baseman, Gabaldon, who made the catch and tried to apply the tag. And some confusion between the shortstop, Philadou, and Gabaldon as to who was going to take that throw. And Detweiler's able to beat the bag, so he'll get a stolen base out of it. Velez with a very defensive swing. Just slaps at it to stay alive at 2-2. Two and two. Bulldogs committed five errors in their semifinal win over Fleetwood. Still able to outlast, or excuse me, over Muhlenberg on Saturday. Still able to outlast the Mules despite those five errors. Some shaky defense in this first for the Bulldogs. This one hit hard by Velez and foul. Chris Hole coaches at third. And Kurt Henry coaches at first for the Mustangs. Don't have the bullpens here to... Go back the foul ball, so the fielders have to go get it. Here is the defense behind Van Ostenbridge. Nick Fiorini's in left. Rafael Fernandez is in center. Ryan Sikolsky's in right. Christo Hunsinger at first. Gavin Gabaldon at second. Trevor Billadou is at short. Tommy Hunsinger is at third. And Jordan Shutter is the catcher. Big lead for Detweiler off a of second. Van Ostenbridge comes with a breaking ball. And it maybe almost slipped out of his hand a little bit. It was missed high and wide. And now the count is full to Velez. Good at bat here by Alex Velez battling with Van Ostenbridge. Well, as with 19 RBIs on the season for the Mustangs, that's second best for Governor Mifflin. And comes with a curveball, and it's a beauty for a call. It's right three. Velez dropped the bat, headed to first base, but home plate umpire says, Anthony, Anthony Vegley says, nope, Steerike three. And that's a big second out for Van Ostenbridge. Two down now in the inning for Travis Jenkins. Well, I said that Velez was second on the Mustangs in RBIs. Here comes the leader for Governor Mifflin, Travis Jenkins, the sophomore with 22 RBIs. Cleanup hitter at 429 on the season. Man at second, two down now for Governor Mifflin. Another beautiful curveball from the left-handed pitcher to the left-handed hitter, and Jenkins has to take it for a strike. Very open stance for Travis Jenkins facing that lefty. 
And he rips this one into right field, clean for a base hit. Detweiler being waved around. Up with the throw comes Sokolski, and it's cut off short of the mound, and the Mustangs are on the board first. Travis Jenkins, the team leader in RBIs, adds one to the list, and he'll move up to second base on the throw home. RBI single and advances on the third as Bryce Detweiler puts the Mustangs on top, 1-0 here in the first. And here comes the, I thought they were going to use the courtesy runner for the catcher Jenkins. They are not. He will stay at second base. Just unloads his batting gloves. First base coach Kurt Henry as Darian Troche now will bat. Troche, the senior, hitting at 313 on the year. Runner now at second base, still with two outs and a run in. The first pitch by Van Braston Bridge is a bit high for a ball. So the Mustangs doing something they were unable to do in the last meeting against Wilson and Van Austin Bridge, which is to get a run home. And the, Must the Mustangs lost that one, 1-0. One 1-0 now to Troche. Up high for a ball, it's 2-0. In the first meeting, Van Austin Bridge also pitched that one, and the Mustangs were able to get some runs off him. Five and a third, Van Austin Bridge went. Three hits, gave up three runs, two of them earned, struck out nine and walked two. Nick Kirkona came on in relief of Van Ossenbridge, and the Bulldogs scored three in the top of the seventh to win the game, six to three. That game in Shillington, of course, as Troche takes another one in the dirt. Now it's three and oh to Darian Troche. Abeldon trying to keep Jenkins close at second. And a big curveball and a beauty by Van Austin. Bridge is over for a called strike one. I asked Bill Underwood, does he have confidence in all four of those pitches? And he said he has confidence. He said he's got more confidence in all four of those pitches than, than I do. Depends on what I call him. But he does have the go-ahead to shake him off if he feels more comfortable or more confident in a pitch. 3-1 pitch. Another curveball and another beautiful pitch. Troche can't blame him. He's thinking it's 3-0. I'm going to get a fastball, and he gets a curveball. And he thinks, all right, you fooled me once, but I'm ready for a fastball now on 3-1. He got another curveball, so now the count is full. In the dirt, ball four. First walk, Van Austin Bridge surrenders. Again, he only gave up 11 walks on the season. 41 and two-thirds innings pitch. He surrenders a walk here. So now the Mustangs have two on and two out. And that'll bring up Matt Kohler. Kohler at 305 on the season. He's got 16 RBIs. In the middle of the Mustangs order has produced as Chris Hole has them lined up with the RBI numbers that we've been rattling off here in this first inning. Two on, two out. First pitch up and in, ball one. This one lifted straight up in the infield. Gabbled on the second baseman, will call for it. He'll fight it, and he'll make the catch. And that will do it for Governor Mifflin here in the first. But the Mustangs do get on the board. They do so thanks to a hit and an error. And Governor Mifflin leaves two. One complete in the Baseball Town High School Baseball Championship game of 2023. Governor Mifflin won. Wilson nothing. Running fight fills the double-A affiliate of the Philadelphia Phillies since 1967. The longest affiliation in Major League Baseball between the Phil Reading Phillies and the Philadelphia Phillies. And they, of course, play here at America's Classic Ballpark. And a trip to an R. Phils game is like a trip back in time. Free parking and affordable tickets and food. R. Phils are home Tuesday, May 23rd through Sunday, May 28th. Thursday, May 25th, Friday, May 26th. Both feature fireworks. Saturday, May 27th, features Mega Blast fireworks. Sunday, May 28th, will be the Philly Fanatic, a blast of a different kind. <laughs> so you have a blast of fireworks on Saturday, and I'll have a blast just watching the Philly Fanatic on Sunday. Great tickets remain for all R. Phil's games. R. Phil's are home 
May 23rd through May 28th. For tickets, call 610-370-BALL. Order online at rfills.com. Our Fills, affordable, fun, family entertainment. Great crowds throughout this past weekend for the Fightins. They had season highs of 8,200 on Friday night, and they topped it with 8,400 on Saturday night. And a good crowd on hand yesterday, almost 6,500 coming out on a, on a Mother's Day night to watch. Good weather. And it's always a fun time here in baseball town. one nothing, our score. Governor Mifflin on top of Wilson as the Bulldogs will come to plate here in the second inning. My name is Bob McCool. Happy to have you with us. For those of you who couldn't make it out, good crowd on hand. Again, it's a bit of a late arriving crowd in a lot of ways, kind of like a Dodgers game. Tickets were, they were lined up outside the gate, late arriving crowd. And so the ticket window was doing its best to keep up with the late crowd of arrivals. But now people are settling into their seats and they got a one nothing game with the Bulldogs batting here in the top of the second inning. First pitch from Ethan Grimm to Rafael Fernandez leading off for the Bulldogs is low and inside for a ball. Grimm comes right back with a 1-0 pitch that's over on the outside corner for a called strike one. Fernandez one for three so far in the playoffs. Senior hitting at 312 on the season. Six doubles, two triples. And he fouls this one out of play. So after missing on the first pitch, Grimm gets two straight in the strike zone. So now it's one ball and two strikes to Fernandez. Jordan Shutter and Mason Sensenek, the three do up for the Bulldogs here at the top of the second. One two pitch, just a bit outside. Governor Mifflin fans thinking it was there. Now the count is even at two and two. Fernandez just gets a piece of it. Pitch probably a little bit low. Fernandez got there and got at least a piece of it to stay alive at two and two. Breaking ball, swing and a miss, strike three. And Jenkins will make the tag as Fernandez comes up empty. Second strike for Grimm. One out here in the second. I'll bring up Jordan Shutter. Shutter has been swinging a hot bat, not only on the season, but even better in the playoffs. He's at 391 on the season. He's four for six so far in the postseason. Two for three in both the quarterfinal win over Ole and the quarterfinal win over Muhlenberg. Again, Wilson beat Ole 6-0 in the quarters, Muhlenberg 6-5 in the semis. Late swing by Shutter. He'll foul this one down the and over the first base grandstand. The playoff brackets were released by the BCIAA. Governor Mifflin was the number one seed. Wilson was the number two seed, despite finishing in third place in the division behind Muhlenberg. Shutter slaps this one to right field. Going to be a long run for Wonderlick. He will not get there as it finds green grass. He held up going around first base. May have been able to stretch that to a double, but a conservative attempt there by Shutter. He'll hold up at first with a single. A ball that just kind of floated down the first baseline. Wonderlick really had no shot to get it. It bounced towards the first base bullpen. And now we will get the courtesy runner for the Bulldogs. That'll be Nick Ruiz who will run for the catcher Shutter. So the first hit for the Bulldogs comes with one out here in the second. That'll bring up the designated hitter, senior Mason Sensenay. Pickoff attempt, and Ruiz gets back. Always a good thought. You get a guy who's a, a courtesy runner, hasn't been in the game. So let's see how much he's paying attention. Ruiz now takes a little bit of a bigger half-step lead. Big swing, no contact for Sensenay. Mason one for five so far in the postseason, hitting at 300 even on the season in total. Three extra base hits, two doubles, and a triple. This pitch is way up high, ball one. One ball and one strike. Center fielder Ryan Lehman for Governor Mifflin takes a couple of steps in. He's pretty shallow out there. 
The eight hole hitter, Sensenig batting. One one pitch from Grimm. Fouled straight back. Sue and air for a fan here in the grandstands. If you have not been out to the ballpark as of yet, and you're watching at home, you may be seeing something different out in right center field. That's, of course, the Redner's Event Center. Phenomenal structure that's continuing to develop as this season goes on. Now, time called by Sensenig at the plate. It will ultimately be the upgraded facilities for clubhouse, weight room, batting tunnels, and the upper floors will ultimately be, and literally will be an event center. Got a great look to it with a, with a brick facing to match up with the old time feel of this ballpark. All of that will be open for the 2024 season. Hope is that it will be no later than June of 2024 that the event center will be open in its entirety. Here's a call, it's D-Reich three to Sensenig. So Ethan Grimm gets his second strikeout of the inning, his third of the game, and now he's got two outs here in the second. And that'll bring up Trevor Bilodeau. Bilodeau went 0 for 3 in the quarterfinal win over Ole on Thursday, and then did not bat in the semifinal win against Muhlenberg. They DH'd for him. And he takes this one over for a called strike one. I show he's outside for a ball. I stand corrected. Ball one to Billadu, the number nine hole hitter. For the man on first and two outs now for the Bulldogs here in the top of the second inning. Pickoff attempt again. Ruiz dives back in. Ruiz does have six stolen bases on the season as he takes his lead. Velez holds him on. Grimm comes to the plate, outside again, 2-0. Tommy Hunsinger in the top of the order in the on-deck circle for the Bulldogs, if Bilodeau can get on board. Another pickoff attempt, and Ruiz dives back in. Up high and again, it's three balls and no strikes to Trevor Bilodeau. Bilodeau, excuse me, no doubt he'll have a take sign here. Count three and oh, nine hole hitter. And he does take, and he takes one for a called strike. Grim walked two in the first. Base runner shut right now is after it's hit by Shutter. Dive back in again by Ruiz. Looked like he spun his wheels a little bit trying to dive back in. Velez applies a tag, but Ruiz does scamper back. But Grimm certainly conscious of the runner. He's got himself in a three and one count now to the hitter, Bilodeau. Runner does take off, ball four, no strike two, and runner is gunned down. Bilodeau didn't think it was a strike, but Travis Jenkins knew exactly what he wanted to do. He guns it to Trevor, to Tyler Minnick for out number three in the inning as Ruiz is caught stealing, and that will do it for Wilson in the second. No runs, a hit, no errors, and none left. Through one and a half here in baseball town, the score. Governor Mifflin won, Wilson nothing. You're watching the Baseball Town High School Baseball Championship games, and nice, this high school baseball championships here at First Energy Stadium are brought to you thanks to the Savage Auto Group. Whether you're shopping for a new or pre-owned vehicle, Savage Auto Group is ready to help you with your search. Visit any one of their dealerships in Burns County. Savage 61 Dodge, of course, right too far from the ballpark here in 61. Savage LMB out on Route 422 in Wernersville. All part of the Savage Auto Group. We thank them for their sponsorship and allowing us to bring you these this game here from America's Classic Ballpark. one nothing our score, Governor Mifflin on top. And the Mustangs about to come to the plate here in the bottom half of the second inning. The 
Seven, eight, nine, due up for Governor Mifflin. Jonathan Radwanski, Ethan Grimm, and Bryce Wonderleck. If you missed the numbers about these two programs in terms of the county championship, Governor Mifflin is making its 25th Berks County Championship game appearance. They have won 14 titles. Wilson making its 8th, 18th appearance, and they have won 12 titles. The Mustangs have the most Berks County titles with four, those 14. Muhlenberg has the second most with 13. The Mules won it a season ago, winning their 13th title. And now this one is lined in the left field, but playing him perfectly is Nick Fiorini. And Jonathan Radwanski is allowed out to start inning number two. Right at Fiorini, who did not have to barely move a half of a step to make the catch, and that'll bring up Ethan Grimm. So the Mustangs have won the most county titles with 14. Muhlenberg is second with 13. Wilson right behind them with 12. Warrior Town has won nine. Fleetwood has won six. Those are the top five programs in terms of county championships won, thanks to Redding Eagle for providing me with those numbers of county championships dating all the way back into the 40s. Ethan Grimm, first pitch to him is inside for a ball. Excuse me, the first pitch was a strike. The second pitch was inside for a ball. So it's one and one to Ethan Graham, who's one for five so far in the playoffs. And that one bounces up there. Grimm on the season is a 280 hitter. Again, Grimm and Bryce Detweiler, the two predominant pitchers for the Mustangs. Both are sophomores. Grimm five and two, Detweiler seven and one. And the 2-1 pitch also misses. Now it's 3-1 and one to Grimm. So Van Ostenbridge walked one in the first. He's now behind the eight-hole hitter, Ethan Grimm, three balls and one strike. And he's up high for a ball. So a young man who has only walked 11 coming into today's game has walked two here. Now we're going to get a courtesy runner for the Mustangs. Joe Berg will run for the pitcher. He'll be a courtesy runner for the Mustangs. And Ethan Grimm, again, you can have, a, in high school baseball, you can use a courtesy runner for both the pitcher and the catcher. So that'll bring up the nine hole hitter, Bryce Wunderlich. He shows Bont and it hit him. Well, let's see. Anthony Fegley, the home plate umpire, I don't think, I. Th question is, is whether or not he leaned into the, stepped in front of the pitch, or did it hit his bat? I think it hit his bat. Now Chris Hole is going to lobby his complaint. Wonderlich stepped in to the pitch, and I wasn't sure if they were going to say that was the call, or if it hit his bat, and it, I believe it hit his bat. Now we're going to get a conference among the, the umpires. Courtesy runner Berg is still at first. Wonderlich still at the plate. So the, the umpires got together. They decided that that was the call. It hit the bat of Bryce Wonderlich, so it's a strike. Now Van Austin Bridge will take the throw over just to see if Wonderlich is still going to bunt or not. Berg does have seven steals on the year. He's got a great lead. Again, he shows Bunt, pulls it back this time, brings Tommy Hunsinger, the third baseman, up and pulls it back and it counts one ball and one strike. Top of the order and Tyler Minnick in the on-deck circle. Again, shows Bunt and again the pickoff attempt.
Wunderlich squares. Pitch, curveball and a beauty. And he pulled the bat back and it's over for a called strike. So now it's one ball and two strikes. So we'll see if this changes what Chris Holt decides to do here. With two strikes now on the batter, Bryce Wunderlich. Maybe even another half a step lead for Berg off of first. Pitch to the plate, swing and a miss, D-Reich three. Ben Osenbridge comes with a fastball, Wunderlich chased it. That's out number two here in the second. It's a second strikeout for Van Ostenbridge, and that'll bring up the top of the order in Tyler Minnick. Again, Minnick flew out the center field his first time up. 462 batting average, seven home runs on the year, 17 RBIs. Hit two home runs in the semifinal win over Muhlenberg. And had one in the quarterfinal win over Brandywine Heights as well. Big swing at the changeup, and Van Ostenbridge pulled the string on it, and Minnick was way out in front. Tyler Minnick was thinking about going yard here and giving the Mustangs a jump, and Van Ostenbridge threw a changeup at a perfect time. He was way out in front. This one ripped into left field for a base hit. Fiorini over with it, cuts it off. And gets it in to the shortstop, Billadu, that holds the runner, the lead runner, at second base as Berg pulls up anchor. Tyler Minnick gets the base hit. Second hit for, for Governor Mifflin. Again, the Mustangs have two on here. And that'll bring up Bryce Detweiler. Detweiler was safe on an error. He scored the Mustangs run in the first. As Tyler Minnick gets his 25th hit of the season. So good speed on the bases. Good lead by Berg off of second. Gabaldon trying to keep him close. And the pitch outside to Detweiler. Bryce, a sophomore, five for eight now in the postseason. And he was the winning pitcher in Wednesday's semifinal over Muhlenberg. Mustangs won that one 6-5. Fastball, and Detweiler cannot catch up to it. And now it's one ball and one strike to Bryce Detweiler. Radar gun here at First Energy Stadium, clocking Van Austin Bridge's fastball at 85. Right about what Bill Underwood told me is his speed, somewhere at 85, 86. He cranked it up a little higher once in a while. He's just a junior. Comes with a breaking ball and a beauty for a called strike two. That Wilder just couldn't quite pull the string on it. And now Van Austin Bridge is a strike away from getting out of this. Two on, two outs, bottom half of the second inning. Way inside. Now the count's even at two and two. Outfield plays him straight away and pretty deep, especially on the right side where Sikulski is. Wind is blowing that way. 2-2 pitch. Swings through it, and the ball goes all the way to the backstop, and everybody's going to move up a base. Detweiler chased it out of the zone, and the catcher shuttered, never even got a, barely got a glove on it, if at all. It went all the way to the backstop, and Detweiler was off to the races and moves up, and everybody else moves up with him. So it goes as a strikeout for Van Austin Bridge, but it's not an out in the inning, obviously. Now the bases are loaded. See if they call that a pass ball or a wild pitch. It was way out of the zone. That'll bring up Alex Velez, who struck out his first time up. And again, pulls the string on it. Velez is out in front of it. Mustangs trying to break this open a little bit here. They lead it 1-0. They've got the bases loaded in two outs. The bottom half of the second inning. Well, as the breaking ball coming in on him, and a, the very defensive swing for senior Alex Velaz, who's now three for eight in the postseason. Joe Berg, the courtesy runner at third. Tyler Minnick at second. 
Bryce Detweiler now at first for the Mustangs. 0-2 pitch. Again, foul swing and a miss, and it bounced off of shutter, and a run is going to score. And now here comes Minnick. The throw is high, and Minnick will slide home safe. So the Governor Mipple Mustangs just scored two runs on a strikeout. Velez chased it. It hit the foot of the catcher, Jordan Shutter, and rolled towards the Mustangs' dugout. Shutter chased it down. Van Austin Bridge, the catcher, covered. And the speed of Tyler Minnick, he just kept on running. The throw a little bit high, and until Van Austin Bridge could get the tag down, Minnick beat the throw. It's now three to nothing, Governor Mifflin. It's a scoring decision you don't see a whole lot of. Mustangs with back-to-back -back strikeouts, and they end up scoring two runs out of this. Now there's runners at the corners, and still and two outs. Detweiler moves up to third. Belez stays at first for Travis Jenkins. Pitch to him, back through the middle. Gabaldon will take it and flip it to Billadou to end the inning for Governor Mifflin. But the Mustangs put two more across. They do it on just one hit. There were no errors, there were two left. After two, Baseball Town High School Baseball Championship game has Governor Mifflin on top of Wilson by a score of three to nothing. And the situation in all of that, it, you, you cannot, it's not really a, the fault of the catcher. It's just that the Mustangs chased pitches that he really didn't have a chance to catch. The one was off the very tip of his outstretched glove and all went all the way to the backstop. The second one was in the dirt and hit off his foot and rolled towards the dugout. A little bit of activity in the Governor Mifflin bullpen. It's Joe Berg loosening up down there. It might just be him trying to stay active and if Berg hasn't pitched for Governor Mifflin on the year. So the Bulldogs now trying to overcome some adversity in that second inning. They now trail three to nothing in this game. And they'll bring the top of the order to the plate now facing Ethan Grimm. Actually, they will not. Billadu, who was the batter at the end of the inning, when the courtesy runner Nick Ruiz was thrown out stealing, he will let it lead off. Billadu had a 3-0 count on him, but he starts fresh here in the second inning. So it'll be... Trevor Billadu, then the top of the order, Tommy Hunsinger and Evan Gabaldon do up for the Bulldogs here in the third. First pitch, Billadu comes up empty. Right back, Grimm comes up high, ball one, one ball and one strike. And as I said, I think Joe Berg was just tossing the ball around just to stay active. He's that quickly heading back to the dugout. Swing and a miss, now it's one ball and two strikes. Bulldog have a few players stirring around down in their left field bullpen. One ball and two strikes to Billadu, and over for a call, it's D-Rike three. Four strikeout now for Grimm. One out here in the third. Now bring up the top of the order in Tommy Hunsinger. Hunsinger grounded out his first time up. Junior five for eight now in the postseason. And takes this one outside for a ball. Tommy, three-sport athlete, starting quarterback for the Bulldogs in the fall. He's also on the basketball team. Takes this one inside, on the inside corner for a called strike one. Tommy throws right-handed, bats left-handed. And 
takes that one outside for a ball. Now it's two and one. Right back through the box. Grimm knocked it down. Still trying to make the play and cannot get there in time. Good hustle by Tommy Hunsinger who beats it out. Mustang dugout not so happy about it. They thought it was in time. Bulldogs think differently and Tommy Hunsinger has a face hit. That'll be the second hit for the Bulldogs. And that'll bring up Gabaldon. Gabaldon walked his first time up, walked on four pitches. So Hunsinger who has good speed. Be the runner at first, seven steals on the season for Tommy Hunsinger. As Gabaldon bats. With the Bulldogs down three nothing to Governor Mifflin. Sophomore pitcher Ethan Grimm delivers there for a called strike and a good one. Again, Grimm throws fastball, curve, and change. Good lead for Hunsinger off of first. Bluff's going, and Gabaldon fouls that out of play. So Ethan Grimm gets ahead of Evan Gabaldon. No balls and two strikes. Bulldogs got two on in the first. Couldn't take advantage of it. Had a runner thrown out, stealing to end the second. This one fisted into the right side of the infield. Detweiler can't quite field it cleanly and everybody's safe. Bryce Detweiler bobbled it. Probably some indecision on his part as to whether or not he might have time to get the force out at second. And it causes the bobble that allows Gabaldon hustling all the way to beat it out at first. That's gonna be an error on the second baseman. And now the Bulldogs have two on and only one out. And Christo Hunsinger will bat. Hunsinger walked his first time up. Christo the sophomore, younger brother Tommy, who's now off of second. Gabaldon off of first. Mustang's not holding either of them on. And the pitch to Hunsinger is over for a called strike one. Tap foul out of play. But he gets ahead of Christo Hunsinger. No balls and two strikes. Mustangs playing Hunsinger way around the pole. Center fielder Ryan Lehman is almost as far to the left of second base as the shortstop Tyler Minnick is. 0-2 pitch, late swing and foul towards the Governor Mifflin dugout. If Christo Hunsinger slaps one down that right field line, there's going to be a whole lot of running going on. Bryce Wunderlich with that light, late swing just took two steps to his left a little bit closer to the right field line. They go, eh, you know what, I don't want to have to run that far if he does that in fair territory. No balls and two strikes now to Christo Hunsinger. Defensive swing, slow roller in the infield. Minnick cannot handle it. Everybody's going to be safe. It was a slow roller to say the least. A very defensive swing by Christo Hunsinger just to get a bat on the ball and it worked. And that's going to be a base hit. Even if Minnick fields that cleanly, I don't know if he throws out Hunsinger. And he knew that. That's why he had to get there as quickly as he could and try to make the exchange as fast as he could knowing he had a hustle all the way. And now the Bulldogs have him loaded and we're going to get a conference on the mound. Tommy Hunsinger is now at third. Gabaldon is at second. Christo Hunsinger is at first. And we're going to get conferences everywhere. The Mustangs are going to talk about it on the pitcher's mound. And the Bulldogs are going to talk about it along the third baseline as Ryan Sikulski will now bat for the Bulldogs. Sikulski trying to get to the party right now for the Bulldogs here in the postseason. Ryan 0 for 6 with a strikeout his first time up. So big time for Sikulski to try to break out of this. The Bulldogs needing something here. They got the bases loaded down 3-0. One out here in the third. So 
Sophomore pitcher Ethan Grimm from the stretch. Osby pitches ripped into left field, hanging up and Redwanski made the catch. Tommy Hunsinger tags up and comes home. They're going to appeal that that he left early, and they'll say he's safe. So to go as a sacrifice fly, so Sikulski will get the RBI. He hit it on a bullet, but Redwanski made the shoestring catch in a beauty, saving at least some more damage for the time being. But Tommy Hunsinger will score the first run for the Bulldogs. It'll be a sacrifice fly and an RBI for Radwanski. And now two on and two out. Gabaldon and Krista Hunsinger had to stay put. And now Nick Fiorini will bat. And now Chris Hull wants a moment with home plate umpire Anthony Fegley. So I would imagine this has to do with the tag by Hunsinger, thinking that he left early. Again, the Mustangs appealed it, but they said that he did not leave early, so the run does count, and now Fiorini will bat. Fiorini flew out to center field his first time up. They really shade him over, playing him almost like a pull hitter for a right-hander. Way over on the left side is the center fielder Ryan Lehman. He's almost playing left center field. And Wonderlick is playing a very deep right field. Pitch in the dirt, nice block by Jenkins to keep it from going to the backstop. Left fielder Jonathan Radwanski playing Fiorini very close to the third base line. These two teams have seen each other a lot, so they've got a pretty good scouting report on how they hit. Two on, two out, run in for Wilson. They're down, still down by two, pitch inside for a ball. One ball and one strike. Excuse me, two balls and no strikes now to Fiorini. Fifteenth RBI of the season for Ryan Sikulski on that sacrifice fly. This one way outside, and now it's three and zero oh to Fiorini. Fiorini does lead them in RBIs with seventeen. The Grim being awfully careful with the junior left-handed hitter. 3-0 pitch right there for a called strike. Bottom half of the third inning, or excuse me, top half of the third inning, run in for the Bulldogs. This one pops straight up, foul and out of play. Jenkins gets the mask off, gives it a chase, but it lands behind the Wilson Bulldog dugout on the third base side. Again, great crowd on hand tonight. Watching baseball here at America's Classic Ballpark. So now here the runners will be off with the three ball and two strike count and two outs here in the top of the third. Fouled away again. Fiorini stays alive. So we'll try it again. Again, runners will be off on the pitch. And it's over for a called strike three. Grimm ends up getting two strikeouts in the inning. Five now on the night. And a big spot there as the Bulldogs get a run. They do it on two hits. There was an error and two left. We head to the bottom half of the third inning. The score now, Governor Mifflin three, Wilson one. Bulldogs have left four now. Governor Mifflin has left four as well through two innings. But the Mustangs lead it three to one as they come to the plate here in the bottom half of the third inning. Again, my name is Bob McCool. Hope you're watching and enjoying 
the 2023 Berks County Championship game. And again, both these two teams will continue their season into the District 3 playoffs. The 2A and 3A bracket, Kutztown, Ole, and Brandywine Heights will be alive in those two. Kutztown in the 2A, Ole, and Brandywine Heights right now are the 4 and 5 seed in the 3A bracket. They'll get their District 3 playoffs underway on Monday, May 22nd. The 4A, 5A, and 6A bracket will get their district playoffs underway on this coming Friday night, May 19th. Fleetwood and Berks Catholic will be in the 4A bracket. Fleetwood is the four seed, Berks Catholic the nine seed. As I mentioned, Governor Mifflin this year will be in the 5A bracket. They'll be the two seed. Muhlenberg the eight, Daniel Boone the 13, Exeter the 14, and Twin Valley the 16th. So the 16th and last team in as of right now. Again, the cutoff for district qualifying points in their power rankings is tomorrow. So any games today would count if they're not a playoff game. These playoff games do not count in your power ranking points. As the Mustangs bat here in the third, Darian Troche will lead it off for the Mustangs. Troche walked his first time up, and the first pitch from Van Ostenbridge is over for a call strike one. Back over again for a strike two. Talking with Chris Hole before the game about the fact that they're seeing Van Ostenbridge for the third time. Is it an advantage? And he said, well, I w it should be. <laughs> I said, well, then again, the second time, he was better than the first time. And he said, well, that's true, too. <laughs> he said, but, yeah, we know what he does. We've seen each other so much. We've seen each other so many times over the course of playing each other in the regular season and the postseason. So we have a pretty good idea of what to expect from him. Here's a swing and a miss, d right three. And that's another strikeout for Van Ostenbridge. Of course, strikeouts actually led to some runs for Governor Mifflin and what was a very bizarre twist to that second inning. He got back-to-back -back strikeouts, but essentially on balls that went, it got away from the catcher. Bryce Detweiler was safe at first on his strikeout, and then Alex Velez the same, and two runs scored on that ball as it rolled away. And that will, this will bring up Matt Kohler. Kohler popped up in the infield to end the first for the Mustangs. They scored a run, a run in the first, and they scored two more in the second. Lead it three to one. Pitch way inside now to Troche, and now the count is one ball and one strike to the senior. Jonathan Wanski in the on-deck circle for Governor Mifflin. Swings and misses the breaking ball, and now Ben Ostenbridge ahead of Kohler, one ball and two strikes. One fouled out of play. Comes again with a curveball, but misses it way wide. Easy pitch for Cole to lay off. Now it's two balls and two strikes. This is again, now the count is full. Good patient at bat here for Matt Kohler. And up and in, ball four. So Kohler works the walk and a great at bat for Kohler. And that'll bring up Jonathan Radwanski. Rodwanski hit a bullet to left field, but he hit it right at Nick Fiorini for a loud out to start the second inning, his first at bat of the night. Rodwanski now three out of seven on the season, in the postseason. Hit 360 overall on the year. Coming into tonight's game. First pitch to him is over for a called strike. So again, Van Ostenbridge gets ahead just like he did with Kohler, but he was not able to put him away. As Kohler walks the walk. He takes his lead off of first. A one pitch, again with the breaking ball that doesn't really break.
Kohler has four steals on the year in four attempts. Good size lead. Van Ossenbridge comes. Tapped towards short. Billadu has to take a step back and misfires and throws it away. And everybody's going to move up. Both runners will now move up to second and third as, again, the defense for the Bulldogs comes apart here. Billadu made the stop, and then his throw to Gabaldon was wide and rolled all the way into foul territory. First baseman Christo Hunsinger had to run it down and allows both runners to move up. Kohler to third, and the batter, Radwanski, is now at second with one out. It'll be an error on the shortstop. Second error now of the game for the Bulldogs. And that'll bring up Ethan Grimm. And Bill Underwood's going to call timeout and wants to go talk things over with his defense here and his pitcher. While all this was going on, Chris Hole had Tyler Minnick warming up in the bullpen. Minnick started both games on the mound for the Mustangs against Wilson. But they have been using him more as a reliever of late. Tyler had some arm issues early on in the season. And so they've been trying to nurse him through a little bit this season. I asked Chris Hole coming in before tonight's game, where do you think he's going to play at, at UConn? And he said, well, I think because of his bat, they're going to try to get him in the lineup as soon as possible and probably in the outfield. I said, but you got to, I mean, he's, he's now plus 90 throwing to throwing. He said, they may very well use him as a reliever. And he said, yeah, I know. And he mentioned the coach who's recruiting him. And he said the coach who's recruiting him, when he played in college, that's what he did. And so he's kind of thinking that along the same lines that I was, that, that Tyler Minnick might end up doing both at UConn, playing and pitching. Ethan Grimm now bats with two on, second and third, and one out here in the bottom of the third. Van Austin Bridge comes to the curveball outside for a ball. I'll bring the infield up. Trying to cut off another run. one out -oh pitch to the plate. Fouled out of play. Grimm walked and scored one of the runs for the Mustangs in the last inning. Ethan one for five in the postseason. Hit 280 overall on the air. Checks his swing here. Ball trickles away from Shutter, but not far enough for the runners to move up. Matt Kohler's at third base. He walked. Jonathan Radwanski is on second base. Safe on the air. A two base error. It has the two runners in second and third, and one out here in the bottom of the third. Mustangs looking for a little cushion here with Grimm, trying to help himself. Breaking ball on a late swing by Grimm. Really fooled him. And now, Red Wine, now Van Ostenbridge has the count even at two balls and two strikes. Strikeout right now would be huge for Matt Van Ostenbridge. With his infield up, two men on. Tries to come with a heater, but he missed inside. And the count's now full. Slap towards second. Gabaldon goes to his knees to field it. Can't get anything on the throw. And the run will score. Probably should have just made the play at first base and gotten an out out of it. As Gabaldon had to go to his knees to field it. And once he did that, he had no shot to get anything on the throw. So that'll be an RBI for Grimm. He's safe at first on the fielder's choice as Matt Kohler comes around with run number four.
We're going to pinch runner again for Grimm. Joe Berg again will run. So it's four to one now, Governor Mifflin. Runners now at the corners as Radwanski moved up to third base on the play. Berg will take his lead off of first, and Bryce Wunderlich will bat. Wunderlich was a strikeout victim his first time up. Curve ball and a beauty, strike one. Berg will take off and move up to second. So just in case, that takes away any possibility of a double play, theoretically. Now the Bulldogs again will bring the infield up with one out, second and third again. Same situation in essence now for Wilson defensively with Wunderlich batting. Tries to come back again with the curveball, but this one misses outside. And the count now to Wunderlich is one ball and one strike. Bryce Jr. looking for his first hit of the playoffs. 0 for 4 now in total. There's a fastball right there at the letters for a called strike two. One ball and two strikes now to White Wonderlick. Tyler Minnick in the on-deck circle in the top of the order for Governor Mifflin. Just missed inside. Now it's two and two. Foul down the third baseline. Knocked down by Chris Hole. Kept it in front of him. Runners will go back. Count stays full, excuse me, stays at two and two to Wonderlick. In the dirt, Wonderlick lays off. Now the count is full. Two pitch. Hit hard. Hunter knocks it down. Will make the play to first in time. Run will score. It's now five to one, Governor Mifflin. Wonderlick hit it hard. Tommy Hunsinger knocked it down, kept it in front of it, and then makes the throw to first in time for the out. So Wonderlick gets the RBI on the ground out. Two down now in the inning. Rim moves up to third base. Excuse me, Berg, the courtesy runner, moves up to third base, and that'll bring up Tyler Minnick. We'll see if they even pitch to him here. 5-1 lead now for the Mustangs. Minnick, one for two. Singled and scored in the second. Check, swing, fouled out of play. A little surprise with the base open. They're even opting to pick, pitch to Tyler Minnick here. 5-1 game right now for Governor Mifflin. A one pitch. Curve ball up high, one ball and one strike. Two runs in for the Mustangs. A man on third and two down. Curve ball and a beauty. Locked him up and it's now one and two. Mustangs with two runs in this inning without the benefit of a hit. So Van Austin Bridge trying to bring this one to an end here in the third. He's trying to get out the reigning Burke County Player of the Year. 
Rolls it towards third. Hunsinger up with it. He'll make the throw in time across the diamond, and that'll do it for the Mustangs in the third. But again, more offense for Governor Mifflin. Two runs, no hits. There was an error, and one man left. Three complete here in baseball town. And the high school baseball championship game now favors Governor Mifflin by a score of five to one. So five runs on two hits for Governor Mifflin. Wilson's committed two errors. And then Austin Bridge has walked three as well. For Wilson, one run on three hits. They've left four. Governor Mifflin now has left five. That man left on third base at the end of that inning. So it's 5-1, Mustangs lead it. And Wilson will bat here in the fourth. Just looking back through the league championship games, as I mentioned, these two teams met for the 2021 title. Governor Mifflin won that 5-4. Chris Holt told me before the game that the Mustangs lost the two games to Wilson in that, series, that regular season as well. And then we're able to win the county championship game 5-4. They also met in 2006. Wilson won that one by a score of 10 to 6. 2004, they met, and Wilson 10 run them. It was a 12 to 1 decision in favor of Governor Mifflin in 2004. And again in 1999, Wilson won it 3 to 1. So there have been four meetings between Wilson and Governor Mifflin prior tonight. Bulldogs have won two, Mustangs have won two. So this one will break the tie and declare the 2023 county championship. Will Mifflin five, Wilson one as the Bulldogs bat here in the fourth. Rafael Fernandez will lead it off as Ethan Grimm still out there on the mound for the Mustangs. Tyler Minnick was warming up in the bullpen. Chris Hole saying he, could, he would pitch tonight. Alex Velez could pitch tonight. And the first pitch hits Fernandez. Rafael Fernandez hit by the pitch. Number four, Jordan. I'll bring up Jordan Shutter, who has one of the Bulldogs' three hits tonight. As he slapped one down the first baseline for a base hit. Fernandez takes his lead off of first. And that hit Shutter. Up and in, and it caught Shutter right in the left arm. So you got Fernandez on the shoulder. He gets Shutter in the arm. That'll put two on and nobody out for Mason Sensenick. Now time is called. Bulldogs calling time from the dugout. It's going to be a, for, for a runner. They're going to get Nick Ruiz to come on and run for Shutter. Again, Shutter the catcher, so they get the courtesy runner Ruiz to run it first. Sensenick struck out his first time up. Designated hitter for the Bulldogs, stands in. Two on, nobody out. Top half of the fourth. Now Grimm will bluff and bring Fernandez back to the batter's box. So Ethan Grimm's thrown two pitches in this inning, and he's hit both batters. And he's got himself in a pickle here. Minnick trying to keep Fernandez close from his shortstop position. Pitch the plate is up high for a ball. at the letters is a strike. One ball and one strike now to Mason Sensenick. Sensenick, 300 hitter on the season. A couple of doubles and a triple, six RBIs. Bulldogs trying to take advantage here in this fourth. 1-1 one, one pitch. At the knees for a called strike. So Grimm gets the first strike at the letters, comes back and gets the second strike at the knees. Late swing and a miss, D-Reich three. And Sensenig a strikeout victim. 
Sixth strikeout now for Grimm. One down here in the fourth. I think we're going to get a pinch hitter for Wilson. Nick Kirkona will come on and pinch hit for the Bulldogs for Trevor Bilodeau. Kirkona was the winning pitcher in Wednesday's semifinal win over Muhlenberg. He ended up being the winning pitcher in the first meeting between these two teams coming on in relief of Van Ostenbridge. Ended up pitching an inning in two-thirds in that 6-3 to three win for the Bulldogs at Governor Mifflin. That was back on April the 17th. He bats here with two on and one out. And a curveball to start him off is over for a called strike one. Draconi with nine hits on the season, nine RBIs to go along with it. Another curveball and a defensive swing, and now he's ahead of Nick Kirkona. No balls and two strikes. Kirkona was 0 for 2 and had one of those RBIs in that win over Muhlenberg on Saturday. Looking for something here. Now he's behind the count. No balls and two strikes. Grimm will step off. Keep Fernandez close at second base. Top of the order in the on, and Tommy Hunsinger in the on deck circle for the for the Bulldogs. O2 pitch in the dirt, good block by Jenkins. Make sure the runners can't move up. Now it's one and two to Kirkona. Slap towards third. Matt Kohler can't make the tag. He'll make the throw across the diamond. Not in time. Did he tag the lead runner? The third base umpire says he did. Buddy Zimmerman, the third base umpire, is indicating that the runner, Fernandez, is out. So either he tug him or he said he was out of the baseline, but Fernandez is out. The throw across the diamond, Krakona beat it out. So it'll be a, he'll be safe on a fielder's choice. Courtesy runner Ruiz moves up to second, but that's two outs now in the inning. In the top of the order, and Tommy Hunsinger to bat. Hard to tell from my angle whether Fernandez was tug or he was called out of the baseline. Slap to the right side, one hopper right to Velez. He'll make the play all by himself, and the Bulldogs go out without any further damage. For Wilson in the fourth, no runs, no hits, two left. Four and a half, three and a half complete. We head to the bottom of the fourth, and the score now, Governor Mifflin, five, Wilson, one. Reminded that the Reading Fight Phils will be back home here at First Energy Stadium Tuesday, May 23rd. That's going to be an 11 a.m. game, another education day here at the ballpark. 11 a.m. first start, the Phils will be hosting the Harrisburg Senators for a six-game homestand next Tuesday, May 23rd, and it runs through Sunday, May 28th, Thursday the 25th, and Friday the 26th. Both feature fireworks, and then Saturday, May 27th, features a Mega Blast fireworks. Sunday, May 28th, the Philly Fanatic will be here and doing his thing at America's Classic Ballpark. Great tickets remain for all our Phil's games. Our Phil's tickets at 610-370 ball or order online at rphils.com. The R Phil's are affordable, fun family entertainment. Two, three, and four do up for the Mustangs here in the fourth. Bryce Detweiler, Alex Velez, and Travis Jenkins. Van Austin Bridges' first pitch 
is tapped towards third. Tommy Hunsinger will flip it across the diamond to his younger brother, Christo, and Bryce Detweiler is retired on one pitch here in the fourth. Three straight ground balls now for the Mustangs to third base. The last two in the third inning, and now he's the first in the fourth as Alex Velez will bat. Velez has struck out both times, but he was safe the second time around on that bizarre second inning in which the Mustangs scored two runs on strikeouts. Ball got away from the catcher, and runners were able to advance. Mustangs have five runs on just two hits. Swings over the top of a curveball. And then Austin Bridge is now ahead of Alex Velez. No balls and two strikes. Stays alive by fouling that one out of play. Right back towards the press box. Some oohs and ahs from the crowd. Red and white on one side, maroon and gold on the other. Swing and driven into center field. Rafael Fernandez will take a couple steps back. He'll make the catch for out number two. And that'll bring up Travis Jenkins. And Austin Bridge and out away now from his first clean inning in this game. With the cleanup hitter Jenkins batting here with two outs in the fourth. Jenkins won for two, singled and drove in a run in the first. With a line drive to right field. And fouls the first pitch back. Again, Jenkins, the sophomore catcher, one of four sophomores in Chris Hole's starting lineup. And with the freshman center fielder, Ryan Lehman, in there as well. Bryce Wunderlich, a junior. All will be back for the Mustangs next year. Van Austin Bridge, a junior, misses up high. Talking with Bill Underwood about his recruiting. He's definitely getting uh, some looks from the Division I folks. One ball and one strike. Curve ball lined into center field. Fernandez will not be able to get there. It bounces up and off his chest. He does a nice job to keep it in front of him. It'll keep Jenkins at first. So Travis Jenkins gets his second hit of the night. And it does indeed keep Ben Osenbridge from getting that first clean inning. Still no 1-2-3 inning as Darian Troche now will bat. Troche 0 for 1. Walked in the first, struck out in the third. The designated hitter for the Mustangs will bat. Governor Mifflin does not opt to use a courtesy runner for Jenkins, the catcher. As Troche bats with two on, excuse me, with one on and two outs. Actually had Jenkins dancing back to first base a little bit on that delivery home to Van Ostenbridge, but he missed it outside for a ball. Curve ball, beats it into the ground, foul. Don't have access to the pitch count for Van Austin Bridge. 80 pitches is the limit. I think he's got to be starting to get a little closer. Here they got him picked off. Hunsinger throws it down and they'll make the tag. Van Austin Bridge will get the pickoff. So in essence, he ultimately does end up getting the one, two, three inning. On the pickoff attempt, Jenkins is tagged out at second and so the Mustangs in the fourth, no runs, one hit, no errors, and none left. We are through four in the Baseball Town High School Baseball Championship game. The Mustangs five, the Bulldogs one. Five runs on three hits for the Mustangs. They've committed one error. They've left five for the Bulldogs. One run on three hits. Governor Mifflin's committed two errors. Wilson has now left six on base. Bulldogs did a lot of that on Saturday in a game against Muehlberg. Talking with Bill Underwood about that 
before tonight's game, I said, boy, you were in a position to put them away in a number of occasions and just really couldn't seem to get it done. And he said, yeah, I, yeah, I can't argue with you. And then it got to, it was a 6-3 game going into the seventh. And Muhlenberg was the visiting team and they got two outs. And all of a sudden the Mules put together a couple hits and they got a run. And then another hit, and now it was a six to five game. And you're thinking, man, those opportunities that we didn't get. But ultimately, the Bulldogs were able to get the final out with freshman Ben Culp on to relief, in relief of Nick Krakona to get that final out. And the Bulldogs come up with the six five to win to get to this county championship game. They're in a 5-1 deficit this time around as they'll come to the plate here in the fifth inning. Seven innings of high school baseball. It'll be 2-3 and 4 due up for Wilson here in the, the, in the inning. Evan Gabaldon, Christo Hunsinger, and Ryan Sikulski, the three due to bat for Wilson. First pitch up high. Gabbled on, on base both times as we're going to conference on the mound here. Mustangs will call time. Gabbled on, walked in the first, safe on an error in the third. pitch at the letters called strike one this one lined into right center field Wonderlick closing on it he'll make the catch for out number one Gabaldon hit it well but it hung up and the right fielder Bryce Wonderlick able to close the gap and squeeze it for out number one here in the fifth That'll bring up Christo Hunsinger. He, too, has been on base both times. Walked in the first, singled in the third. It was an infield, infield single. Slow roller that Tyler Minnick could make a clean play on it. Giving Hunsinger his fourth hit of this postseason. First pitch to him is low ball one. Dirt with that breaking ball. He falls behind Christo Hunsinger, 2-0. Christo, the lone 10th grader in the Wilson starting lineup. Three juniors to go along with it. And that's over for a called strike one. Fouls this one out of play. Count even now at two balls and two strikes. This one lined into right field. Wonderlick again has it sized up, and he'll make the catch for out number two. But Bryce Wonderlick getting the activity here in the fifth, and he's been equal to the challenge through the first two. As Ryan Sikulski now will bat. Sikulski 0 for 1 of the night. Struck out in the first. Sacrifice fly and an RBI in the third. Drove in the first and only run of the game for the Bulldogs with that sacrifice fly. That one into dirt. Let's see if, how much longer Ethan Grimm goes for the Mustangs. If he can get through this fifth. That's over for a called strike. Again, Chris Hole could opt for Tyler Minnick. And as he said before the game, I'm just going to let you know that Alex Velez could pitch tonight. He's now been medically cleared to pitch. This one fouled out of play. Velez has not pitched since April the 3rd because he was having some arm issues. 
But the Mustangs just got clearance that he could pitch, so could be Velez, could be Minnick, could be both. We'll see how long did he go with Ethan Grimm. The sophomore's been good. He's only given up three hits. Fouled at the plate. He struck out six. He's only surrendered one walk. Hard to argue with what Ethan Grimm has got, got, got done for the Mustangs so far. But two outs here in the fifth. This one fouled out of play again. Count stays at one ball and two strikes to the cleanup hitter, Ryan Sikulski. Swing and a miss, d right three, and that'll be strikeout number seven. And a 1-2-3 inning for the Bulldogs here in the fifth. And after four and a half, it remains Governor Mifflin five, Wilson one. Tonight's broadcast brought to you thanks to the good folks at Savage Auto Group. Whether you're shopping for a new or pre-owned vehicle, Savage Auto Group is there to help you with your search. Do so at their dealership. Do so online. Check out Savage Auto Group. Large inventory and a wide selection of models and always with competitive pricing. We thank them for allowing us to bring this web stream to you. Governor Mifflin will come to the plate here in the bottom half of the fifth inning, sitting on a 5-1 to one advantage. Five, six, and seven do up for Chris Hole's team here in this fifth inning. That'll be Darian Trosh, Matt Kohler, and Jonathan Radwanski. Lots of conversations going on right now outside the Mustang dugout. I wonder how much of that might be what I was just referring to a moment ago in terms of do the Mustangs now turn things over to a reliever? As Troche leads off here in the fifth. And the first pitch by Van Ostenbridge is a curveball and a beauty for a strike one. Trosh walked in the first, struck out in the third in his two at-bats to this point. This one lifted into center field and shallow. And who's going to get there? Fernandez can't get to it, and it will fall for a base hit. Villadu, the shortstop, couldn't get there, and nor could Rafael Fernandez, the center fielder. It looked like Fernandez may have called for it. And Villadu kind of cut off the pattern. And it just found the perfect spot for a base hit for Troche. And now they're going to have a runner for Troche as well. Fourth hit for the Mustangs. And it's a leadoff base runner here in the fifth. And that'll bring up Matt Kohler. I believe that's Christian Sanchez who's running for the Mustangs. As Kohler bats, Kohler 0 for 1 on the night. Walked and scored in the third as a pickoff attempt. Sanchez gets back. Kohler with an infield pop-up. And as I said, a walk and scored a run in his two plate appearances at this point. Another of those sophomores for the Mustangs. And Austin Bridge comes to plate, bunt, bunts it foul. The Mustangs trying to play a little small ball here, trying to move some runners, get some runners in scoring position, and add some insurance to the totals as well. Sanchez takes his lead off of first, kind of leaning back towards first, however. Again, the show bunt. And they throw back it to first instead. And 
Osterbridge comes. Bunt popped it up, but it takes a hop in front of Van Osterbridge. He's only got the one play, and that's the first. That will move the runner to second. Sacrifice for Kohler. It did bop, it did come off the bat up in the air, but not far enough for Van Osterbridge to catch it in the air. So it does do the job. A sacrifice. One three on the put out, putting runner in scoring position now with one out. And Jonathan Radwanski at the plate. Radwanski lined out the left, was safe on an error his last time up. Now a throwing error by the shortstop, Philadu. Trying to keep Fernandez close at second base with one out. And the breaking ball is low for a ball. Pitch is fouled out of play. They'll reach the parking lot. And the count is even at one and one. So great to see this great crowd come out here. Couldn't have asked for a better night. Temperature at 75 degrees at first pitch at 6.05. Sun beginning to set here at America's Classic Ballpark. Lights are on, brand new lights here at the ballpark as well for the 2023 season. And they're not just your standard lights. This one ripped down the third base line and foul right past Chris Hole, who didn't even flinch. Just turned his head. And the lights can flash, they can flash different colors. All part of the spectacle here at America's Classic Ballpark. Runner on second base, one out here in the fifth inning for the Mustangs, looking for some more insurance. They lead it five to one. Way up high. Two balls and two strikes now to Radwanski. Great thrill for these kids, no doubt, to have the opportunity to play here in this ballpark. Of course, the Reading High Red Knights now will play all of their games here in this ballpark. Swing and a miss. Strike three, and Redwanski is a strikeout victim. Good curveball there from Van Ostenbridge. Seventh strikeout for Van Ostenbridge. Two out now here in the fifth. Reading fight fills and Reading High with a, an agreement that they would play some of their, played some of their games this year, and then beginning in 2024, Reading High School will play all of their home games here at First Energy Stadium. And so, of course, these two teams, Wilson and Governor Mifflin, who are part of Division I in the Berks Conference, they'll get a chance to play here because they play two games each, so one home game, one away game. And so the Mustangs and the Bulldogs will get to play here every year. It's a 20-year agreement between Reading High School and the Reading Fight and Fills. This one tapped foul and out of play. And now one ball and one strike to Ethan Grimm. Ethan walked and scored in the second. It was safe on a fielder's choice back into third. He's been on base both times. Trying to help his cause. He also drove in a run on that third in that fielder's choice. One, one, two pitch, up high, ball two. 84 on the radar gun for Van Austin Bridge. So he gets it up there consistently in the 80 45 range. But again, he another year. Talking with Phil Underwood, who's been around pitchers at Wilson High School for 19 years. And he thinks that he'll be able to get to a point where he can hit 90 by next year to senior year. This one lifted into shallow right field. Going to be a long run for Sokolsky. He will not get there. Sanchez will round third base and he will come home as Ethan Grimm does indeed help himself with an RBI single, his second RBI of the night. And the Mustangs now lead it six to one. Didn't hit it hard, but he found green pastures down the right field line. Sokolsky cheating the right-handed hitter a little bit towards right center field, had a long way to go and had no chance to get there. Now we're going to get a pinch hitter for Bryce Wonderlich as Hunter Unger 
a senior will pinch hit. The man on first base and two outs. Unger hit 276 during the season. Eight total hits, two of them extra base hits. As Grimm takes his lead off of first. Pitch way up high. Hunter Unger, a senior. And Austin Bridge comes with a heater. And Unger fouls it straight back off the mask of Jordan Shutter. Count now even at one ball and one strike. That's over. Oh, it's just a bit low, and it's two and one. And then Ossie Bridge tried to get him again on the curveball, but just missed it a little low. Two balls, one strike, two down. Run in for the Mustangs. This one lifted foul and out of play straight behind us. Now it's two balls and two strikes. Grimm takes his lead off of first. Curveball and a beauty steer right three. So another strikeout for Van Ostenbridge, his eighth. But the Mustangs do more damage. Another run for Governor Mifflin. They do so on two hits. There were no errors. There was one man left on base. We are now through five in the Baseball Town High School Baseball Championship game for 2023. The score now, Governor Mifflin leads Wilson by a score of six to one. Ethan Grimm will return for Governor Mifflin. And he will pitch the sixth, or at least start to pitch the sixth. Just as a follow-up to the point I was making a moment ago about the Redding High, Redding Fight and Fills agreement for Redding High to play here at First Energy Stadium all their home games. They will be allowed to use the visiting clubhouse, the, what is the existing visiting clubhouse. It's already adorned with the Reading High logo on the front. It was a great press conference here at the ballpark to make the announcement. Some members of city council here, Mayor Eddie, Eddie Moran, in addition to obviously the administration of Reading High School for the announcement. And the expression on the faces of the kids for running high when they walked in and saw that clubhouse, knowing that that's going to be their clubhouse for the future, was, a, was something that was just so cool to see. And I got a chance to talk with Tom Freeze, the Reading High head baseball coach, and I asked him how it's starting to impact his program. The Reading High baseball program, what's a very proud program, has obviously run into some hard times of late, and it's in a lot of ways about numbers. He said, we have already seen an increase in numbers already. And the first pitch from Ethan Grimm hits Nick, Nick Ferrini. That's the third batter hit by the Bulldogs in this game. He hit back-to-back -back batters to start the fourth inning Did Ethan Grimm and then worked out of the trouble. And to finish the thought about running high school, Tom Free said, Bob, I'm telling you, the numbers, we, we went from having about 30 kids in our junior high and, and varsity program combined to having over 50. And we expect the numbers to be even better than that next year. So the they, players are starting to come out. They're starting to buy in. And this is a Reading High team that's got a storied program in baseball just as much as they have in basketball. As I said to Tom Freeze at the moment, that before there were state championships in the last couple years in basketball, three championships in the last seven years, there was a state championship back in 1983 with Cooter Jones leading the way. 
for the Red Knights back in 83. They won the county championship in 2014. There's another hit batter. Fernandez hit again, second time in a row that Fernandez has been hit. And that might be it as Chris Hole makes a beeline to the pitcher's mound. And I think Ethan Grimm's day is done. Tyler Minnick is jogging to the dugout. And that's not because his day is done. My guess is that Tyler Minnick either uses a different glove or is making some other kind of equipment repair because he's going into pitch. So again, back to back batters hit to start an inning, just like it was for Wilson in the fourth. And so Ethan Grimm, I believe now will go to second base. Assuming that Bryce Detweiler will now go to shortstop. And Minnick, as I said, will come in to pitch. So Tyler Minnick will get a full complement of warm up pitches. They did have him warming up a little bit in the bullpen an inning ago while the Mustangs were batting. So Tyler Minnick will come on to pitch. And Chris Holder told me before the game that he's got a full complement. He can go as far or as long as we need him. So whether he's going to be there for a six-out save, well, that depends on two things, how he holds up and how Wilson is able to go after him and how successful the Bulldogs are able to go as well. But the Mustangs feel as if they've got their full complement of pitchers available to them, with the exception of Detweiler, who started on Saturday's semifinal game. So Minnick will come on to pitch now. Tyler Minnick on the season. 0 and 1 on the year. He had he does have three saves on the year. Started three games. Earn run average of 1.65. He's pitched 17 innings. Struck out 25. Walked six. One of them intentionally. So again, changes throughout the infield for the Mustangs as a result of it. Brim will go to second. Detweiler will go to short. And Minnick will come on to pitch. The Minnick is loose. And he walks into a jam here. As Jordan Shutter will bat. Shutter has been on base both times. Single in the second, hit by pitch. One of those two guys hit by a pitch to start the fourth inning. So four batters hit in this game for Wilson. And again, Bulldogs who have left six on base trying to make something happen out of it as Shutter will bat facing Minnick. First pitch, fastball in the dirt at 89. Again, Minnick can top 90 with his fastball. Obviously, as he hits an 89 on his first, but it's low for a ball. Minnick started in the two games against the Bulldogs during the regular season. This one's over at the letters for a called strike. Now he'll bluff and get Fiorini to get back to second base a little closer. This one fisted towards second base, and Ethan Grimm will make the catch on the infield pop-up. So that's one down. And a jam shot off the fist of Shutter. He's retired on a pop-up in the infield for the first out. That'll bring up Mason Sensenick, or will it? No, it's going to be Nick Ruiz, who the Bulldogs were using as a Courtesy runner, he's going out. He's now going to bat for Sensenick. So Nick Ruiz now will be the pinch hitter. And the first pitch to him. Is a ball. 
Ruiz has four hits on the year, four RBIs to go along with it. One of those hits, a double, and he takes that one for a called strike one. One ball and one strike. Two on, one out for the Bulldogs here in the sixth. Fouled away. Again, 89 on the radar gun here at First Energy Stadium. Fiorini, the leader runner at second. Fernandez at first. Again, staying a nice job by Ruiz just to stay alive. That the off-speed pitch from Minnick. Swing and a miss, d right three. And that is out number two. Straight heat from Tyler Minnick. That one topped at 91. And that'll bring up another pinch hitter for the Bulldogs. Jack Gable will now bat. Gable, just a freshman, will bat for Billadu. So two on, two out. Swing and a miss again at the fastball. Gable can't catch up to it. This is Gable's 11th at bat of the season. Does have three hits in his first 10. Three RBIs to show for it. This one tapped towards short. Detweiler will flip to Grimm and that'll do it. So Tyler Minnick comes into a jam and gets three straight batters retired. And the Bulldogs leave two more again for the Wilson in the sixth. No runs, no hits, there were no errors. Two men like Gant left on base. Six and a half complete. And it's now a six to one Governor Mifflin lead. Bulldogs will be down now to their final three outs. Governor Mifflin will send the top of the order and Tyler Minnick to lead off and a change in the pitching mound for Wilson as well. And it will be the freshman Ben Colpool now come on for the Bulldogs. He's kind of assumed the late inning closer role for Wilson. Very, very promising young pitcher, just a freshman. He came on to get the save for Wilson in the semifinal win over Muhlenberg. His job is to try to keep the Mustangs at bay here, make sure that they can't get any more runs on the board, and hope that Wilson can come up with a big seventh inning. 6-1, Mustangs lead it. As they bat here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Governor Mifflin looking for its 15th Berks County Baseball Championship. Wilson trying to get its 13th. Two of the winningest programs in the county. Governor Mifflin with 14 titles. Muhlenberg with 13. Mules won it last year, beating only 11-3 in a championship game. Wilson has 12 county championships. Boyertown has nine top four teams in the county with county championships. Of course, Boyertown no longer part of the BCIAA playoffs. They play instead in the Pac-10. Top of the order, Tyler Minnick for the Mustangs here in the sixth. Minnick, one for three so far on the night. Singled and scored in the second. Colt starts him with a curveball up hot.
Fouls this one down the first baseline. Christo Hunsinger will give it a chase, and it will land out of play and into the Savage 61 dugout suite on the first baseline. Great vantage point to watch a ball game. Literally, and I do mean literally, field level. Right back to the ground ball to Hunsinger. Tommy Hunsinger will throw it across the diamond. Low throw, but Christo Hunsinger will scoop it up, and a minute is retired for the first out here in the sixth. And that will bring up Bryce Detweiler. Detweiler 0 for 3 on the night, was safe on an error and scored a run in the first. Struck out and grounded out in his other plate appearances. First pitch to him, over for a called strike one. 86 on the radar gun for the freshman Ben Culp. That'd be a great combination that Bill Underwood will have next season with Van Austin Bridge and Culp as starting pitchers. This one in the dirt for a ball. Christo Hunsinger also a very solid pitcher for the Bulldogs, just a sophomore. Both of these two teams have a lot of components coming back again next year. Sophomore Bryce Detweiler fouls that one out of play. And now it's one ball and one strike. That one's low. Bulldogs thought they had it. That Weiler almost pulled the string on it, but Bryce held the bat back. And ball is low, ball two, two balls and two strikes. Curve ball to beauty. No, just missed. And again, the Bulldogs thought they had it. So did I. Now the count is full. Again, missing just low. Back with the fastball and missed it. So Detweiler with a good at bat, works the walk. He's on base for the second time. One out base runner here in the sixth for Alex Velez. Velez 0 for 3 on the night. Now 3 for 10 in the postseason. Good size lead for Detweiler off of first. Culp a little uneasy, makes the pickoff attempt. That Weiler has 11 steals on the season. Second best on the team behind Tyler Minnick, who has 21. And that's low in the ball, in the dirt, ball one. Alex Velez, and then Travis Jenkins in the on-deck circle for the Mustangs. Looking to add to what is right now a 6-1 to one Governor Mifflin lead. Another pickoff attempt, and again, Detweiler dives back in. Brian Root takes off. This one lined into right field, but it's right at the right fielder, Sikulski. Detweiler kept on running, and they're going to double him up. Bryce Detweiler never picked up the, the baseball. He rounded second base. Sokolski caught it, and it was an easy double play, and that'll do it for the Mustangs in the sixth. So the play is and goes as 7-3 on the putout for the third and final out of the inning. And the Mustangs are done in the sixth. For Governor Mifflin, no runs, no hits. No errors and none left. Last chance for the Bulldogs as we head to the seventh inning. Six to one, Governor Mifflin on top in the 2023 Baseball Town High School Baseball Championship game. And we want to thank Savage Auto Group for providing the sponsorship that allows us to bring this baseball game to you here from America's Classic Ballpark. Thanks to Tim Profit and the good folks at Savage 61. Savage L&B, Savage Auto Group with their sponsorship, great supporters of high school sports. 
as are the Reading Fight and Phils. And again, the Fight and Phils will be back home one week from tomorrow, Tuesday, May 23rd. It'll be an 11 a.m. start time as the Phils will host the Harrisburg Senators for a six-game homestand beginning Tuesday, May 23rd and running through Sunday, May 28th. Fireworks on Thursday and Friday night. Mega blast fireworks on Saturday. And then the Philly Fanatic here doing his thing on Sunday, May 28th. For tickets, call 610-370-BALL or you can order online at rfills.com. It'll be like the many folks here tonight who didn't get their tickets in advance and ended up having to wait in a long line to get in here. Actually delayed the start of the game for a couple of minutes to allow some more folks to get in. And a good crowd on hand here tonight watching this championship game that now is to the seventh inning. And Wilson will start it with the top of their order and Tommy Hunsinger. Bulldogs need five. And they face Tyler Minnick. First pitch from Minnick is a fastball at 92 for a called strike. Hunsinger one for three of the night, singled and scored the Bulldogs run in the third. Slaps it towards short. Detweiler, slow roller. Across the diamond in time to just get Hunsinger at first for out number one. It was a very slow rolling ground ball, and Detweiler kind of let it come to him. Hunsinger's got good wheels out of the left-hand side batter's box. And the throw got there just in time to get out number one, and that'll bring up Evan Gabaldon. Gabaldon 0 for 2 in the night. He's been on base twice. Once by way of a walk and the other by an error. Two errors committed by the Bulldogs, one for the Mustangs. First pitch to Gabaldon is a ball. The second is a strike at the letters. One ball and one strike. Right back to Minnick. Minnick will jog to first, flip it to Velez for out number two. We're gonna get a pinch hitter for the Bulldogs. Tyler Wenzel will bat. for Christo Hunsinger. Wenzel, a senior, getting in a bat here. And the first pitch to him is a ball. Minnick comes back and misses low, ball two. So Wenzel batting for Christo Hunsinger. Giving a senior a chance to bat here in this championship game. And a pitch outside. Now it's three balls and no strikes. So Minnick takes a walk around the pitcher's mound. Refocus just a bit, comes back. Gets right down there for a strike for three balls and a strike. Tap down the third baseline and foul. That Kohler fielding it in foul territory. So now the count is two balls, three balls, and two strikes. Mifflin fans on their feet. They are one strike away from the county title. The pitch, ball four. First walk surrendered by Tyler Minnick since coming on. That'll pass the baton now for the Bulldogs to Ryan Sikolsky. Sikolsky has the lone RBI in this game for Wilson on a sacrifice fly back in the third. Officially 0 for 2. Struck out in his other two plate appearances. The man on first and two outs. Ripped down the third baseline and fair. That'll be a base hit for Sikolsky. Wenzel will stop at second. And the Bulldogs still alive. It's got to feel good for Ryan Sikolsky. Gets his first hit of the postseason. As Wenzel stops at second. Again, both these two teams are going to continue their playoffs into the District 3 playoffs. Wilson in 6A, Governor Mifflin in 5A. As Nick Fiorini now will bat. Fiorini hit by a pitch his last time up. Two on, two out. First pitch, ball one.
Bulldogs get a good lead. Mustangs not bothering to hold either runner on. Ripped and into right field for a base hit. Wenzel will come around and scores. It rolls all the way down to the bullpen. That's going to allow Sikulski to come around and score. Fiorini will roll into third base with a two-run triple. Bulldogs still alive at six to three. Ripped down the first baseline. Alex Velez leaped as high as he could. It was just over his extended glove. Four extra base hits as Nick Fiorini gets a two-run triple. And now Rafael Fernandez will bat. First pitch to him, outside for a ball. Fernandez is hit by a pitch his last two times up. And swings and misses at that one. <laughs> so with each and every ball, opposite sides of the stands applaud. Red and white on the third base side, maroon and gold on the right on the first base side. That one's up high. Count now, two ball, there's one ball and two strikes to Rafael Fernandez. Swing and a miss, D right three, and that'll do it. The Governor Mifflin Mustangs hold on for the 2023 Burks Championship. Mustangs win their 15th title as Tyler Minnick strikes out the final batter here in the top half of the seventh inning. For the Bulldogs in the seventh, two runs. They did so on two hits. They left one. And their final score will show the Governor Mifflin Mustangs as your county champion by a final score of six to three. So here's your final numbers in this one. For the victor, victorious Governor Mifflin Mustangs, they got six runs on five hits. They committed one hit, one error, they left six. For the Bulldogs, three runs on five hits. They committed two errors, and they left nine men on base as the Bulldogs make a little bit of noise in the top half of the seventh inning. But the cushion was too much in favor of the Governor Mifflin Mustangs, and they hold on for the Berks County Championship. Final score again, six to three in favor of the Mustangs. Wilson falls to 15 and seven now overall. Governor Mifflin at 18 and four. And again, both will continue into the District 3 playoffs beginning on Friday night. Governor Mifflin will be the number two seed as it stands right now in the 5A bracket. Wilson will host a game as well as the number seven seed as of right now on Friday uh, in West Lawn. So the final score again goes to the Governor Mifflin Mustangs. The Mustangs winning their 15th Berks County Championship and they do so at the expense of their arch rival, the Wilson Bulldogs, by a final score of six to three. Great crowd on hand watching baseball here at First Energy Stadium. Hope you enjoyed the coverage as well here on our Reading Fight and Phil's Facebook and or YouTube channels. If you wanna watch Reading Fight and Phil's baseball, you can do so the same way. You can listen to Reading Fight and Phil's baseball through our Facebook, our YouTube, and our Twitch social media platforms and or you can watch it on MILB TV for all of our home games here at First Energy Stadium. And again, the Fighting Phils will be back here next Tuesday at 11 a.m. start time as the Phils will host the Harrisburg Senators and the Phils will be home from Tuesday, May 23rd, right up and through Sunday, May 28th. Fireworks on Thursday and Friday. Mega Blast fireworks on Saturday the 27th. And then on Sunday, May 28th, the Philadelphia, the Philly Fanatic will round out the homestand here for the Reading Fight Phils. So again, thanks to the good folks at Savage Auto Group for sponsoring the championships here at First Energy Stadium and the telecast, uh, the broadcast of this county championship that goes the way of the Governor Mifflin Mustangs. Again, the final score, Governor Mifflin six, Wilson three, Thank you very much for tuning in and watching, and we hope to see you sometime soon right here at America's Classic Ballpark. My name is Bob McCool. Thanks for watching, everyone, and have yourselves a great evening.